some building bitachon blocks, okay? So hold on one second. <clears throat> I want to share this with you. So we call it build bitachon workshops because it's like a workshop with our tools, you know? <laughs> so, so welcome to Grow Connection Circle. What are some of our tools to build bitachon? It's very much connected with Chabad. I didn't realize how connected bitachon is. And I think that's why Chabad does speak a lot about bitachon. Because bitachon is a mida that's cultivated through the thoughts that we choose. So emuna is the knowledge. It's the thoughts. Just because you believe something, it doesn't mean it's going to have any impact on the way you feel. One second. On the way you feel or your actions. A thief also has belief in Hashem and prays to God before he goes and does his, his important work to sustain his family or his or himself or his addictions or whatever it is. But really, um, I was just listening. I forgot where, but I mean, this is the idea of, the, of addiction. It really comes from our deepest need, which is to bond. Every person has this vital need for connection, for bonding. And so if a person can't get it in a healthy way or doesn't cultivate healthy bonding, he will or she will resort to bonding with addiction. And so what bitachon really is, is bonding. It's from the word tachatabayis, which is to plaster the house. Just like uh, plaster is a bonding agent, the way we speak about friendship, cementing a friendship. So what's happening here is that we are choosing to bond with the oneness of Hashem, the oneness inside of us. And so it's not just a belief, it's it's visceral, it's in your body, it's in your emotions, it's sensorial. It's literally from the word bitachan, you hear the word body. It's, it's embodied belief. And that takes work and there are building blocks to build the emuna into the bitachon. And like uh, Shalom Mordechai Rabashkin, he's the one who came up with the motto, Aleph Beis Gimel, Aleph Beis Gimel, Emuna Bitachon Brankt, Aleph Beis Gimel, Emuna Bitachon Brankt. So what does it bring? It I brings... just played it last week and I so... spoke about him. <laughs> We're so connected. <laughs> it's the Geula. So you don't just get Bitachon. We got to build the Bitachon. Aleph just... Beis brings Gimel, which is Geula. Which brings the Geula. And the Bitachon is that link to Geula. So the Amuna is all the gifts that Hashem has given you. He's given us Torah. He's given us um, your roots. And the question is, how are you building from that? And it takes a lot of courage to build. It takes trust in Hashem. And it takes using every ounce of your energy and everything you've got, everything that Hashem has given you. And so it's like... Um, You've got this, but you've got you now you've got to take the gifts Hashem Hashem has given to you and the the bond with Hashem to give it back to him with your creativity and with your bitachum. So, <laughs> so what are some of these building blocks? What is your building block to not live as a thief, <laughs> which is misalignment between between the beliefs and the body's expression? Why is it that the that the thief prays to God? Because he believes that there is a God, but it's not so it's not integrated because if if he truly, truly integrated that belief, then he wouldn't resort to, to stealing, right? He would really put his affairs into Hashem's hands. He would trust. He would say the words, I trust you, Hashem. I don't know where I'm going to pay the next bill from, but I trust you, Hashem. I don't need to go and and be dishonest. And how many of us find ourselves these days saying, I trust you, Hashem. <laughs> like something comes up in your life and you just 
don't know the solution. You don't see the way out or what's going on in Israel. And Hashem is saying, it's not enough, your Amuna. Come on, it's time for you to live this because I want to bring Geula. So live it. Live your bonding. Live your love of another Jew. So the belief could be, we all love each other. Of course. But do you believe it enough that when it hurts, you're going to give to someone else? Or when you're in a relationship that's difficult, do we go into fight, flight, freeze, or hurting the other person back? Or do we say, I trust you, Hashem. You want to build my bitachon. That's why I'm here in this in this situation with this person. And I'll be, I'll rise above it. I'll respond in a way that the other person is going to learn what bitachon is. And we become the mirror for the other, but we don't need to mirror the negativity. Instead, we, we mirror our neshama. Now that takes enormous strength. And going inside and knowing your true value. That's why davening is knowing who is standing before whom. You got to know who you are. You got to know all your strengths because bitachon is, is utilizing all the gifts that Hashem has given you and giving it back to him. And so that takes a partnership and that takes knowing your value, because if you don't, you'll be like, well, I deserve that. I deserve that person punching me in the face. Really? So I'll punch him back. And then you're basically, it could be, of course, for, you know, physically, not just physically, emotionally. Now, what, so what do we do? And I want to share with you a few tools <clears throat> that I'm sharing with the world that my father taught his students. And by Ashkacha Pratis, I put the picture of him showing us his, um, last week I asked you to caption it. So if you see, look at him, he's with his, um, he's with his fist. He's going, you've got this, but today I have a new meaning to it. He's saying, know your strength. You're strong. You you can do this. And if you don't know your strengths, your gifts from Hashem, then it'll be very difficult to have bitachon to give it back to him because all your gifts from Hashem are the ways that Hashem sustains you through your gifts. And sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we are the ones with the gift and the other person has none of that. And we, we build resentment instead of building bitachon because we look at the other person and we say, why do I need to be the leader here? Why do I need to initiate? Why do I need to be the, the one to rise up higher and that's because go like this you've got this you've got the strength why like why that there's no whys in hebrew it's for what hashem is saying to you here is your kayak here's your strength use it to create shalom use it to to radiate love in your home yes there might be bickering there might be negativity so either you mirror that or you go inside and you remember this, you have the koach. And sometimes we turn to Hashem and we say, Hashem, why did you give me all this talent? You know, sometimes people with talent have a lot of, um, they have the struggle that everybody needs them. Everybody wants them. They have so much responsibility and obligation. So <clears throat> that's okay. Feel Feel the privilege of being chosen by Hashem to be the light for other people who are in darkness. Instead of feeling the resentment, like, why can't they be the light for me? Sorry, you were chosen. You have this greatness inside of you. And you know what? The darker it is around you, the more you're going to be pushed to use your strengths, right? And so you've got this choice to choose anxiety or to choose tranquility. Why choose anxiety if you can choose tranquility? The tranquility of the soul is to know this, to know that Hashem is smiling at you and he's saying this, you've got this. And yes, I chose you to be the bigger one. I chose you to be the stronger one in this situation and to use the gifts that I have given you. And everyone here, take a moment to think about the times in your life where you felt like, 
why is this all on my shoulders? It feels like such a brick. I feel such a weight. Why can't other people take care of me? Why do I need to be the one? Sometimes it, come, it could even be with parents that sometimes there's role reversal where we need to take care of giving to them what they didn't receive or maybe as they age. There's all kinds of situations which can build resentment. Now, is that is that what we want to choose? Do we want to build resentment or build bitachon? So I know that everyone that's on here wants to build bitachon. And the fact that you want it, already Hashem is going to give you even more koach to build the bitachon, which, you know what it really looks like, bitachon? It's, a, it's an atmosphere inside your heart and around you that is calm. It's it's tranquil, it's serene. Now, who doesn't want that? As opposed to life is just so stressful. I once spoke to um, a woman who is doing amazing things, like building community. And she said, I eat stress for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And yes, she's doing amazing things, but what's going to happen in a few years? She's going to be so burnt out or, or the people around her won't want to go near her. And it's true because I do know that her children, although she's doing amazing accomplishments, her children don't want to be around her. It's, true, it's too stressful. They get married and they move far away. So I was thinking the other day, really what Bitachon is, is I just want to be, 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 be. You know, all we want is for the hostages to come home. And that feeling of being together. I was thinking Hashem doesn't really need us to build skyscrapers and build, have major um, accolades and, you know, accomplishments. Really, really the greatest joy is to be just like those mothers. You know, when you don't have something, you know what's truly valuable. When I heard um, the mother of Hirsch Pollen speak and all she wants is to be with her child, that's Hashem. Hashem just wants to be with us in tranquility. But we're so stressed. We're bickering that Hashem's like, well, okay, you keep bickering. I'll, I'll uh, you let me know when I'm invited back. Hashem rests where there's shalom. And shalom also means in the heart. There's a feeling of peace. Um, there was a, a, a woman that she, she said as a child, I forgot her name, but she was speaking on the Nishma circle. She's from Toronto. And I'll remember her name is actually, um, hmm, second, I can't. I can't remember this minute, but basically she said as there were a bunch of sisters growing up and they were always bickering and fighting. And once they were sitting at the table and it was dinner time and they were fighting again and the father sat there. And first he said, could you please stop fighting? It's dinner time. And they just, they just continued. They didn't know how to stop. And then the father said, all right, I'm going to leave the table. You tell me when you, when you're done and I'll come back when you're done. And it says that Hashem rests where there's peace, where there's joy. And he just wants to be with us. That's all he wants. That's the greatest joy. And I think that's what bitachon is. It's that feeling of tranquility that we're sitting together. I say bitachon really has a lot to do with our relationships. <laughs> because we're in trust when it comes to our own relationships. That they're exactly the way they are for us to grow. And, and when we are in shalom, when we are in oneness, Hashem sits at our table and he smiles at us children. And, and that's, that's all there is. So think about what it means for us to build that tranquility into our lives. If our lives are stressful, I don't think that's ever going to change until Mashiach comes. <laughs> It's just the way life is. We're here. Hashem puts us here with tests to see if we can grow through them. That's basically the test. Not the outcome, 
but our process. And can we respond with, I trust you, Hashem, and Hashem saying to you, I trust you, you've passed the test already. When you stay in that calm bitachon and you stay in the being that Hashem is with me, even closer when I'm going through a test, there's, there's more closeness because you need Hashem more. So then you could say, wow, then you can go into a grow. You could say, wow, thank you, Hashem, for this feeling that I need you, that I can't do it on my own, that this is a partnership. I, I used to think I was in control, but thanks for the reminder. And, <clears throat> and, and so this mida, this feeling of being, where does it stem from? From Chabad, from your Chachma, from the ideas that you choose to think every day. So the building block really is from the thoughts. And so my um, what I did was I created these workshops that I'll be teaching at my winter retreat schedule. This is it. I incorporated everything I'm doing, whether it's art or games. And in Hashem, I'll share this with you to create your own retreats for anyone. <laughs> I have all my supplies. But I actually opened the wrong one because um, I have my teacher's one. But the point is that, um, one second, I'm going to, oh, so look, ladies, I, I made bitachon bricks. This is from my retreat. And I'll, some of them say just different things that happened in our life that are tests. And it's, I, I put it on a, a on, for girls. Your mother asks you to wash the dishes, but your friend wants to chat with you. So different things. You're in the middle of a great game. Your teacher asks you to stop the game, come to class. You have a hard test tomorrow in school. You could be nervous or you could say, you know, we we all have our own tests. So I'm going to make one for women. If you could send me all your situations in your life, <laughs> we'll make one for women too. <clears throat> um, but here's the teacher one. Um, no, sorry. The teacher one has, here's the curriculum. So I just want to share a building block today. Um, so the first one is the definition of bitachon. Okay, if... So the idea of tranquility, security, where does it really come from? It's complete peace of mind, a state in which a person is fully calm and confident, knowing that one can rely on Hashem and trust in Him. Now, how do you get to this feeling? A person contemplates that Hashem is loving and caring. So what are some of the ideas that you contemplate to get to this place? And now this contemplation, it... It takes a lot. It's not just saying it once, because then it's still in emuna. <clears throat> it's it's embodying it. It's saying it ten times a day. It's sitting there thinking about it. It's doing art. It's changing the components of these beliefs and bringing it into your body. Um, so we know when we trust that Hashem knows what's best for us, and when we consider this that Hashem always does good, even to those who are undeserving, then we will feel full bitachon. Now, sometimes we think we can trust in people, <clears throat> but only Hashem is the one that can truly be tr trusted in all areas of our lives. So the Rebbe explains, when a person places his full trust in Hashem, feeling fully at ease with complete bitachon, that is enough for him to merit Hashem's salvation. Can you believe it? So sometimes we focus so much on the solution for the salvation, but we don't stop to have bitachon and just connect to Hashem in trust because that is the solution. And it would be beautiful to share some ideas and or ways that you've seen this in your life practically have any of you ever experienced this while we're doing the art when you say the words i trust you hashem i know you've got my best interest in in at heart hashem i know you you know what's best for me i trust you that this is going to that this is okay that this is good <clears throat> what happens <clears throat> that is going to bring the salvation so already you know it's like I remember, I remember when I gave birth to my first child and I had no idea what I was doing and I was so stressed out. 
And the doctor said, your stress is preventing the baby from being born, which was true. So my body was so stressed, it wasn't opening to allow the baby through. And it took longer because of that. By the later births, I learned how to bring bitachon in. I learned how to visualize the goodness that this pain is creating inside of me, the light that I'm bringing into the world. And the the pain itself wasn't, it wasn't so painful. It was the tension and the stress that, that, ex, that exacerbated the, the contractions. So we all go through contractions in life. But when we add the stress and the tension and the, and, and our, our nervous sympathetic system, right? And we're not in the parasympathetic system, which is the calm energy. Sometimes we prevent the solution from opening up or ourselves opening up to that, to that light that Hashem wants to give us. So that's why it says, Bitru, Bacha Batru Avesenu, Batifal Temai. That it says it in Tehillim. David Amalek says, your fathers, but the, the, our fathers trusted in you, and that's why you delivered them. The trust is what delivered them. And that's that's really what, what it's all about. And it takes it takes work to create within ourselves that peace. So this is true even for someone who is seemingly undeserving. That let's say a person doesn't merit salvation. If they truly trust in Hashem, the avaida of bitachon alone gives him the merit to be helped. That is the deeper message of the words of the Tzemach Tzedek, Trach Gut, Betzayin Gut. Think good and things will be good because the very act of thinking positive thoughts will create the good. You are creating the good. One of the my father's quotes was he would say when he was faced with a test, he would, this is, these are his words. This is a test, a challenge to uplift me, to help me grow into a better person. This test brings out my pure goodness. And there's a Pasuk in Tehillim chapter 60 that says, Nasata li-re'echa neis lihis neises, mipnei kaishet salah. What does that mean? You gave li-re'echa those who fear him. But the word li-re'echa doesn't just mean fear. Look at the word fear, yira. It's from the word to see. So those who see you, those who choose to bring Hashem, bring you in, see Hashem in every situation, nasata l'recha nes, you gave them a nes. So a nes could be a test. But my father taught from a mimer of one of the Chabad Rebbeim that a nes is a test, it's a banner, and it's also a miracle. And they're all connected. Because when you see every test, as an opportunity to go beyond nature, which is your miracle, be the miracle, then you become like a banner of a ship in a stormy sea. And the banner is not affected by the storms. It, it stays above it all. And you become like that banner for others as well. So when you feel like, why me? Why me? Why am I the one that needs to lead the way or or you know, bring the positive energy into this situation. Well, you know what? You're that banner. You're the nice. And why? Nice means to test you or to raise you up. Hashem wants to raise you up. He wants to bring you closer, just like my father said to me. Whenever you say, I trust you, Hashem, come home. I'll give you a quarter. I'll raise you up. And I'll give you a big hug. And he lifted me up in that, in that way of that I felt uplifted and it was no longer about the adversary and that's what Hashem wants to do for us every time so you know I have we all have sukkim and tehillim but that we say in Shemana Esrei with the beginning and the, the last right initials of your name the letters of your name so I'm Nechama so I always used to, I always say the words um Nachan Libya Lekim Nachan Libya Shira Vazameira I always thought this was I like this pasuk because it's about singing and joy. Um, so, but then my my I was 
learning this Pasuk and my husband says, that's also Nechama. I said, oh, okay. I didn't realize like Nechama, Nun and Hey is also Nesatel Recha Nesli Hisnaises Mipnei Kaishet Sela. And this is how you beautify them. Kaishet is like jewelry. So, or to bring out their truth. There's different interpretations of that word. So Hashem really is raising us up. And if we just have that mindset that every opportunity that we're given could either build resentment or stress or an opportunity to come closer to Hashem, like you're giving birth to your emotions. You know, according to Hasidus, your emotions are your babies. You're always giving birth. Your thoughts, the chachma, are the parents. That's the mother and the father. And the children are the midos. That's why midos go crazy. They go wild like children. And it's our, we have the power to put the children in their place, to decide which thoughts are going to control us today. Just like imagine walking into a classroom and letting the children control, you're never going to have a word in there. So we have to have strategies. Now, of course, children are lovable and they're powerful and they have so much potential. So your emotions are powerful and they, 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 they give you passion and strength to overcome your struggles. You can't live without emotion. You don't want to numb them either. That's why some people numb their emotions because they're like, just like quiet those children. We don't want to see them. No, it doesn't work that way. Let the children express themselves. Let your emotions control, control but you have a godly soul. That's why my father goes, like you've got this. You've got a stronger part in you that is that can direct those emotions in a healthy way. And you can cultivate the thoughts that will lift you up today and will help you feel tranquility and serenity and knowing that Hashem is bonding with you in every, through these tests, Hashem is with you. And when you go beyond your natural emotions, you are the miracle. You're the miracle. And you're a miracle to the people around you. That's why it says that a person with bitachon is a blessing to others, not just to yourself. And it's it's a blessing to live this way. So my father said one of the one of his um, quotes was, "Focus on the beautiful drama of your own existence. You're watching your own movie. Let it unfold and laugh and have a good time and say, "Wow, here's the conflict. Okay, what's but you get to choose the script." You get to write your narrative. The next scene is in your hands. That's what a test is. How are you going to respond? And my father was a theater major in college. So he loved acting. And I loved his stories. He would literally dress up and tell us stories. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I would invite my friends over on Saturday night to hear his stories. And he would tell us stories and then stop in the middle and say, next week, we're going to continue these spooky golem stories. <laughs> and he would dress up. And, and it's so funny because he didn't finish his story. He needs to come back. And all of our loved ones need to come back. But our stories are neither done either. There's no end. Until Mashiach comes, that's going to be the beautiful ending. Until then, <clears throat> we are a continuation of the stories of our ancestors, of our parents, and we're literally continuing. And we get to choose to write the story of our lives. So if you see, if you're sitting there watching a movie and there's like, you know, this horrifying part, you're just like, I can't wait to see what happens next. So just, what if we would just focus on the beautiful drama of our own existence? And here's a moment where, um, you know, there's such big things happening in Israel but even small things like I'm having my winter retreat this week. And then we had a flood and the basement stinks. Hashem, what are you thinking? We need that basement. We needed that basement. Like, hello? So I could like freak out and be like, this is not going to work. And um, the company, you know, they ripped us off. They put it in the wrong way. They covered all the drains and we had a lot of rain. And I could like, you already could feel my stress as I'm saying this, or I could be like, Winter retreats in two days. I'm going to live what I'm saying. What we're sh learning here is that the trust in Hashem is going to bring the solution, the salvation. And somehow it's going to work out even better than I planned. 
There is a reason. I'm going to redefine my definition of good and bad to, and let Hashem tell the story here. I will do my part. Thank God. I'll focus on a grow. I'll say, Baruch Hashem, we have the upstairs and we have a few rooms upstairs that we're going to use. Um, where am I going to put the extra children that I can't put downstairs? I guess I'll have to bring them into my house. I, maybe there's something good about that. I don't know. Not my plan. Um, but I'm going to just like be bond. I'm going to bond with Hashem through this and talk to Hashem and say, Hashem, show me the way. I'm looking forward to seeing this, this play, this drama unfold. And I can't wait to share with you. And I can already visualize the outcome of girls being uplifted and learning about building bitachon. So why do I need to be in distress when there's a much bigger picture here? And my and I know what I'm doing. I'm building bitachon. So guess what? Hashem's like, you're going to build bitachon too before the event because you think you're just going to teach it? No, you're going to live it. And here we go again. So this is it, right? This is our lives. Thank God. Thank God we're here. And uh, Hashem has chosen us. Nasata lirecha. He chooses those who see him to give them tests to raise them up. And we are the banner for other people. So think about how you can be that banner. Um, so I recommend that you all have a bitachon journal. And you write down these little stories that are happening. And you you like kind of write a diary to Hashem. Dear Hashem, what were you thinking when you flooded my basement two days before? Have a real relationship. Bond. That's bonding. Betachon is, it's not just like, oh, wow, it's in my head. It could be that it's in your feelings and you might feel sad and mad, but you're directing those feelings into a relationship with Hashem. You're saying, Hashem, please help me through this. And then you just take that breath and you say, I trust you, Hashem, and you leave it. Because you're like, that's the only solution that I see right now. Yes, I can make that phone call. I can go and see if, you know, what can be done. But you already have, you already have the solution. The trust brings the salvation. And so how many of you, what are your thoughts about this? How many of you can join me in this building Bitachon journey? which will change our life and the people around us. And I'm sure some, I'm sure mo many of you have already been on this journey, but of course there's, it, there's always a, the next level. And there's always those triggers that you didn't expect yourself to freak out at. Hashem thinks, if you think you've got this, no, no, no. Hashem's going to say, okay, here's the next test. Like the test that you didn't expect. Not that it's harder. It's just, I didn't even know that I had that wound. I didn't even know that. Oh, you know, um, this this vacation happened and something, you know, I got this call or and it just brought out something that I didn't know needed bitachon. And then you can look at it and say, hmm, amazing. That's the test. That's the test that I get to pass. I get to choose to pass by flying colors. So we're going to do art now. I'm going to welcome Ahuva. Thanks for being here. Um, and the reason we could trust in Hashem that solutions could come out of nowhere is because Hashem creates the world, yesh me'ayin, from nothing, right? Me'ayin yavai ezri, where will my help come? It comes from nothing. Ayin, it comes from when you feel like there's nothing in existence that can help you, that's a test. You, you don't. It's not a test if you think you can con control it or handle it. A test is where you're actually saying, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. And when you have that bittle to surrender to Hashem, now we're talking bitachon. This is a test. And you could say, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for the opportunity to really give myself over to you. And, and, and Shar Bitachon says, when it speaks about the benefit of peace of mind that we have through bitachon, then it goes through 10 ways that a person with bitachon is better than an alchemist. An alchemist can turn ordinary metal into gold, but an alchemist needs materials to turn into gold. 
But when you have bitachon, you're better than an alchemist. You're superior. Why? Because you can turn nothing into gold. But Nechama, but. Dina, <laughs> the only catch in the story is that Hashem actually, it's funny because I was listening to a shiur, right? And yeah. I was talking about, it was like tips on marriage, whatever. So one of them made me think, gave, gave me such respect for dumb blondes. Because like, oh my gosh, that is that is why husbands love dumb blondes because they're like, oh my God, are you amazing? Like, because they're, they don't have an opinion of their own. But actually Hashem doesn't want us to be dumb blondes. He wants us to be smart blondes, whatever, not blondes. I mean, where we actually are strong women, but we use all we are in submission to him. Something like that, right? Where we don't think we know it all or, we could bring our own, you know, opinions and stuff. But sorry, I hope I didn't offend anyone. I'm like I'm trying to off. like the iron. Well, sometimes the iron is what Hashem has given you, but you don't like Hashem has given you gifts. Do you really believe that every gift that Hashem has given you, you can create abundance in your life? Do you believe it? Can you, you believe can, what? You can be very wealthy if you really valued your gifts. You know that? You can turn it around into abundant wealth if you really believe that Hashem has given you. But you might say, from where? How? So that you, of course, of we course. need Hashem. We need Hashem, but we also need to know what our gifts are. Right. So for me, for me, Bitachon is to really trust how wealthy I am already. It's mm -hmm. not like, oh, um, I, it's easier to just say like, you save me, you do everything. It's like, no, you actually have to do a lot as a Jewess, okay. as a so, human. So when we say through the trust, you bring the salvation, we need to redefine what you have been thinking trust is. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking, what I hear is that trust is I do nothing. I'm just like, okay, God, you do it all. Trust is where you use like this. Every ounce of your kayach, it's your energy, your kayach, you put it fully into the partnership with Hashem. It's like in a business, you give every last penny to invest in this partnership. Then you're going to see the dividends. You're going to see. I guess, I guess the trust is 100% of your effort, but no, like holding on to the results, maybe. I don't know. Yes, exactly. And being in the trust while you're in the process. Being present. Being present. But... And that's why gratitude is how it begins. Yehudim is the same gematria as Bitachon. Yehudim means grateful Jews. Yes, being grateful for every ounce of energy that God has given you and saying, I'm going to use it for Hashem. Every talent, every positive thought, that's a talent. To, to be able to choose your thoughts, it's a talent. Think of it that way. So um, let's do two chapters of Tehillim and then we'll do the art. We'll do chapter 60, which has this Pasuk uh, that Hashem tests us to raise us up. And we know that when we're tested, that brings out our gifts, our strengths. O Hashem, you have forsaken us, you have breached us, you are angry with us, you shall restore us. You caused the land to quake, you split it, heal its breaches, for it has faltered. You have shown your people harshness, you have given us to drink wine of bewilderment. You have given those who fear you. So I would say, from the word year, I'll say, year to see. Those who see you. Trials, tests, 
but nace is also we said a miracle and it also is a banner with which to be tested or we're going to say lehis nice is to be raised to be lifted higher and to become the miracle in order to beautify your behavior forever so to beautify your standards in the world so that when you give them goodness, the Gentiles will not criticize you, but they will beautify your judgments and say, excuse me, say that he justly did good to them because they passed many tests for him. It's to make a Kiddush Hashem that others will say that Hashem did good to them because they passed many tests. And look, it says here in the Hebrew, Ella yikshitu dinecha, you're beautifying your judgments, your tests. Vayamru yafa hetev lahem, they will say you did good to them, that they will see that tests are not just bad, but they're really to beautify the person. And it's funny because my name is Dina, and this is my pasak, Nechama. And Nechama, Dina, really means that. It's like, what's the comfort for the din of Hashem's judgment? Where we, sh where we bring out the beauty in the din. That even though we went through that difficulty, <clears throat> that test from Hashem, we're able to come out of it with a new light, with a tzayhar. We take the tzara and we turn it into a tzara and turn it into a tzayhar, a light for the world. And people say, wow, wow, look, look how she beautified your judgments. She deserves the goodness. Um, and they passed many tests. And every one of us has our stories like that. We can take the darkness Hashem has given us and turn it into the brightest light you could ever imagine. And, and then the, the judgment actually becomes the nechama, becomes your, your deeper joy. Because you, you bonded with Hashem, you partnered with Him to build. You built something out of nothing, out of grief, out of sadness, out of whatever Hashem has given you. In order that your beloved ones should be rescued, save your right hand and answer me. Hashem spoke in the sanctuary, I will exalt, I will divide a portion and I will measure the valley of Sukkot. Gilad is mine, and Menasha is mine, and Ephraim is the strength of my head. Yehuda is my lawgiver. Mayav sirachzi al edaim ashlich nali alai peleshes is hisrei ai. Mayav is my wash basin. On edaim I will throw my lock. Philistia, join me. Who will bring me to a fortified city? He who led me to Edaim. Me, Yavileni, Irmat, Sarmina, Chani, Ad Edaim. So this is who will bring me to a fortified city, then to a fortified city to conquer the city of Rome. If you will not help me against the fortress of Edaim, who will bring me and who will lead me upon them? So David and Melech is speaking all about the nations who bring us into Galas, and we're asking Hashem, if you will not help me against, who will, who will bring me and who will lead me upon them? Is it not you, O God, who has forsaken us and who does not go forth, O God, with our hosts? Hava lanu ezras mitzar v'shav teshuas adam. Give us aid against the adversary, but the salvation of man is futile. Through God we shall gather might, and he will trample our enemies. So we think that the solution is in the sword, or whatever whatever solutions we're looking for, but it's it needs to be in combination with our strength and Hashem. And Everything is just the delivery man. It's just the messenger. It's all Hashem. It just appears to be as if this person brought you the salvation, but it's still Hashem. We, we need to remember that. So Yehudas, what you were saying was like, leave it into Hashem's hands. It's 
find the vessel and give Hashem a way to pour his blessings into your life. So that's why it doesn't matter whatever vessel it is. Now you have a hint to the vessels is through the strengths. Anything that you're drawn to, if you love art, then Hashem can pour his blessings into your art. If you love people, work with people and Hashem will bring you the salvation through whatever your divine passions are, your divine talents and gifts. And that's why it's important to know yourself and know what your talents are and know your strength and you're strong because that's, that is the vessel for Hashem to send you the blessings. So think today, what are your vessels? We're going to use this art class to create a vessel. Um, welcome. I just want to welcome each of you who are here. Leah, Hani, Aliza, Hana Rivka, Carol, Chayaha, Malka Bracha. Ariella, Ima, good friend, Ahuva, our art teacher, Chaya Malka, Laura, Yehudis, Sarah, Chai Sarah Braun, and Karen Miller, who's from Israel, and Chava Leah. We so appreciate those of you on camera. Honestly, those of you who are on camera are the ones that keep this going, because <laughs> as you see, I like connecting to people. Um, but it's okay if you don't not come because you don't want to be on camera. We still want you here. But the people on camera is why I show up. Because <laughs> <laughs> if it was only people uh, behind camera, um, I probably couldn't do it, to tell you the truth. I once spoke for another group and everyone was behind camera. I was like, um, I don't know. I think I can't. I'm done. Because <laughs> so, it's, it's so important. <clears throat> I resonate with your with your panim that's really a reflection of your panima your inner neshama so thank you for glowing and growing with us today um okay and actually i just wanted to do quickly chapter 121 um and really we need to we need to have so much trust these days that hashem is going to bring us all home so we can just be with him that's all we want nothing else we just want to be um, oh, it's a relief. I didn't get a chance to say hello to her. She left. Okay, so Sher Lamalais Esai Nai El Hehare May I and Yavai Ezri. I shall raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? May I and from nothing. Hashem can provide for us from unlimited resources. Ezri May Ima Denai Isa Shemayim Ba'aretz. My help. It's from Hashem, the maker of heaven and earth. Al yitain la mot raglacha, al yanum shaym racha, hine lo yanum, vela yishan shomer yisrael, adonai shaym racha, adonai tzilcha al yad yaminacha, yamam hashemesh la yakaka, viareach balayla, Adonai Yishmar Yishmar Chamikal Ra Yishmar Es Nafshacha Adonai Yishmar Tzeischa Vayacha Me Ata Viyad Aylam Hashem will guard your going out and your coming in from now and to eternity. So when you walk by your mezuzah, think about how Hashem is Shemar Dalsa Yisrael is guarding you when you go in, when you come out, and let's. Visualize Hashem guarding every one of our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land, those who are taken hostage. Hashem is protecting them and he's testing all of us to come closer to him at this time and not just closer to him, but to each other. So thank you for joining us here. A circle of sisters holding hands from around the world, praying together, growing and building our bitachon. And through using the gifts that Hashem has given us, that's how we build it. Thank you, Ahuva, for giving us the opportunity to use our talents to build our bitachon, a vessel for Hashem's bracha. Hi, good morning. Amen to everything that you just said. And yes, I agree. It's definitely a test for us to connect more with Hashem, with ourselves, with each other. Um, so I was really inspired yesterday. I was looking at, um, uh, is anyone familiar with Parak Shira here? Um, I was really inspired because like, oh, you have it in front of you. <laughs> That's Hashkecha Pratis. 
um, divine providence because I was like, wow, everything in creation is singing a song and everything is essentially like bitachon means that right the cemented bond the connection and so we also have that and when we look at nature right like i know when i go out into nature i'm like i just feel hasham i'm like ah hasham you know so for me it's like and the winter is really hard because it's like i'm not really going out so much i have to bring nature into my house <laughs> like i have birds and i have plants but i still feel like going out into nature um is like my like it just automatically gives me the bitachon in a way like it's like kind of like I don't know if anyone could relate so I was thinking it would be really cool to do like um like pick something in nature that really appeals to you like painting like for me I'm I'm gonna paint the, the sky and the clouds and the sky has its own the shamayim has its own um its own song so either like you can look it up or I can let it, look it up for you um so here like I'll tell you there's so many things there's Shemayim. It says the Shemayim, the heavens are saying, um, speak of Hashem's kavod and the skies tell of his handiwork. So that's one thing you want to paint or you want to paint the whole picture and you want to include different verses from Parak Shira. Um, so the way I looked up Parak Shira is you look, you go to Safaria. Um, here, I'll type that in if you need. And then um, the earth says, um, it says Eretz Omeris. The earth is saying the earth and everything in it are Hashem's the inhabitant area and all that dwell within it. So it's like, you know, everything that we paint, we can also connect like a, like a Bitachon Pasak to, um, through this, through Parak Shira. Um, so it's kind of like an open, I would say it's like an open, um, art expression um, for something that appeals to you in nature and I can help you find that pasuk, the verse um, here also the rivers it says Naharos omrim Naharos kaf yachad harim the rivers are saying let the rivers clap their hands let the mountains sing for joy together so all these things are um, you can incorporate all of this the waters, the heavens the earth and then we can put the pasukim in for um also the the well springs it says mayanos amrim visharim kecholim kol bach the well springs are saying and the singers who are like dancers are all those who study you interesting um yeah and then there's night and day and moon and sun and stars and yeah just painting all those and then putting that all together with the pasukim so um what else should we also incorporate maybe what you brought up today about the using our talents and, um, you know, making a vessel through our talents and allowing Hashem to bless us through our talents? Would that be something that people want to paint also? I, I want an example of what would that mean. Uh, okay, so I didn't paint it yet, but like, um, for me, I'm going to paint like watercolor sky. And then I'm going to put, um, after the watercolor, it dries pretty fast, like quickly, pretty fast. I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to write the pasuk that appears in Parak Shira. Here, let me type up where you could find Parak Shira. So Parak Shira is, um, you can find in Safaria in Hebrew and English. Every verse, every, um, sorry, every part of creation has a verse that it says to Hashem, that sings to Hashem. Sings to Hashem. So like what, let's say, what appeals to you in nature? Let's say, you had this, like, what would be one thing that like really inspires you when you go outside? Or when you think about it, like the ocean or the yeah. river or the head, what, like trees. what? What? Trees and, trees and sand with sun. Okay, trees. Okay, so. So I would encourage you to paint that and then we're going to look up, I can help you look up the Pesukim for that. Um, I see heavens and earth here. Let me look up trees. Yeah. And also like you could, oh here, I just found trees. It's in chapter three. It says, Ilanos Shabbasada Omrim Az Yiranenu Atzei Hayar Milifne Hashem Kiva Lishpot Eta Aretz the wild trees are saying, then shall the trees of the forest sing out at the presence of Hashem because he comes to judge the earth. 
So every single thing is always um, davening. It's always in a state of prayer, right? We learn about grow and grow through prayer. And so not only are we in a state of prayer and tefillah and bitachon and connection, and also tefillah means like to, to tie together, we're bonded to Hashem through the prayer and through the bitachon, also everything in creation. Um, so even the fruits, it has geffen here. It says the the vine of grapes has its prayer and the ena, the fig, and the pomegranate, and you can you can do the shavas haminim if you'd like. Um, you can do also animals. There's different animals. Um, here's the, the rooster says, when the blessed be he holy one comes to the righteous in the garden of Eden, all the trees in the garden of Eden scatter their spices and they rejoice and praise. And then he too is aroused and praises. Interesting. So the, the tarnagal, the rooster is inspired by the trees that scatter their spices for Hashem. Say all the things that we see in Hashem's world, it has a message for us. It's about like getting in touch and in tune. Um, Can I share something with you, Hudis, about the, the trees? Because, yeah, sure. Because that line where it's um, it's the trees acknowledging Yudke Vavke instead of Elohim. That's the secret behind that verse is that Yud K Vav K is coming to judge the earth now and it'll be a time of Rachmim instead of Elohim of Dean. So there's that's the beautiful, that's the meaning of the Yud K Vav K and that's why it doesn't say Elohim there. It says Yud K Vav K. Oh, yes, I see that in the in the translation. It says, Hash, right, Yud K Vav K. Right, every, right. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. And also it says that the rooster has several calls. It says its first call says this. Its second call says something else. Its third call, fourth call, and its fifth call, and its seventh call. Oh, my gosh. It has a lot. <laughs> well, you know, a... you know what the rooster, what that is about is like, yeah, I always wondered because my mom lives in Menachemi and the roosters start very, very early. And even in Mitzpah, the roosters would start so early. And the thing is, is that each call is a different level of acknowledging and coming to Hashem and serving its purpose. And it starts at midnight at the Chatzot. So the first call is Hashem coming out. And then it we come down and by three o'clock in the morning, we're coming to the Tzaddikim to come and daven. And a, a lot of people get woken up between three and four in the morning as a call to Hashem to daven in the middle of the night. And then you've got the fifth and the sixth hour where you've got your people who are slumbering a little bit. And it's like, okay, time to get up, time to get up. So and then finally, it's the desperation of, okay, they're not doing Hashem's Torah and do something about it, you know, and that's how you start your day. So I, I'm very connected to Berkshire, as you can tell. That's so, that's so <laughs> fascinating. Cause yeah, there are certain times, like, I feel like I do get up, like, so I don't necessarily look at the clock. Cause I'm just like, if I look at the clock, I might not be able to fall back to sleep, but that's interesting to know what time would I be getting up and what, what does that mean? It's so interesting, like in terms of that, that call to Hashem and. I always wonder, like, if I get up in the night and I can't sleep, should I just, like, say to him? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, then you should look into Tikkun Chatzot. Tikkun Chatzot is between midnight and dawn, and it's Tikkun Rachel and Tikkun Leia. And then there's also um, uh, uh, Devei Eliyahu and um, Devei Rebbe Shimon, I think. But, yeah, it's a beautiful prayer that's only said in the middle of the night because Hashem is asking us to bring him down in the night when everyone else is sleeping. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And also has each each animal. So after the tarnagal, it also has the um the Yona, which is the dove. Um, so if there's like an animal or a bird that really speaks to you, you can paint that in and I can help you find the the Pasuk. Unless you want to post Nahama, do you want to post it on the um do you want to post the Safaria Parakshira? And then we can like scroll together. Or unless you want to pick one or two and everybody can do that with you. And you can right. share art. Yeah. Can do, yeah, I guess we can do like the heavens, the earth, and the trees and, and the waters, I guess. Okay, let me type that in. Okay. Heavens. And when I was can we do clouds also. Yeah, sure. The clouds actually have a separate prayer than the heavens. <laughs> 
Isn't that fascinating? The clouds have their own prayer. Yeah. I've been enthralled with them. <laughs> and also the well springs. Hi, well, Malka, where are you from? Oh, you're on mute. We can hear you. Oh. Okay. My, uh, I live on Hartzion, um in Jerusalem at the Diaspora Yeshiva. And I wrote a book called Who by Fire um, 42 years ago. I was really badly burnt. And I uh, survived Baruch Hashem with a lot of miracles. And today I have a foundation um, and we help people with burns. That's what we do. We raise money and we go to visit people and we um, send a newsletter. We have a newsletter to help people. Um, that's what I do. And I have a lot of kids. Wow. Wow. Sure. A lot of, I could never have imagined what I do today. I could never have imagined it way back then. Wow. Hashem, wow. really, you're an example of Hashem. Of Nais, Nasate, Lurecha, Nais, Nisai. No one should know from this, but you... Really model that you took something that was such a huge test and you turned it into such a miracle. Wow. Yeah. And then I got a lot of good advice. <laughs> and and whenever I like, you know, I all the thing I, I became a speaker. I, I went to America and different places, Canada. I went once, I don't know. Um, um what's it called? Uh, I don't know. I forget where I went. In Brussels or somewhere around there. Where, I don't know where they have, um, they're into diamond, <laughs> diamond industry or something like that. Anyway, I, I went to a lot of different places and I met the Jewish people. That was what was so amazing for me. And um, I was, you know, like a really shy person. And I, words were more or less my enemy. And for <laughs> Hashem. <laughs> I came out of it, and um, I'm meeting people, and um, yeah. yeah, so it was hard, but I, you know, I worked at it. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't, it's like you don't choose your mission, it's like your mission chooses you, like they, they say that, and until that happened to me, I didn't understand that, like, what do you mean, I'm going to choose my, like, my passion and my mission, but like, it's not really that way, it's like Hashem... Hashem is, you know, he's handpicking you and your journey and everything you've been through for your mission. Put it on the back so maybe we can put that in also like into our, um, into our art, like, a, like connected to our mission, you know, our things that we've been through and elevating us up. So here, I'll show you what I've done so far. I did the sky um, and the earth. I don't know if you can see. Oh, it's blurry. Um, it's very yeah, I know it's blurry. Okay, here. Ah, so, nice, so here's nice. the, got the the clouds. I'm gonna find their special plus. Like here's the heavens, and then I have the earth. I'm gonna open add the, the water. The, the trunks. I have more stuff. You wanna open the trunks so I can put in more stuff? Um. Okay. So for those second, um. Should I type them up, the specific sukkim of the heavens and earth? Um, okay, I'll type them in. What about some... I, mean, have... I could... I do have it in... I could show you in Sfaria. You want because me to... It's in, yeah, it's chapter one of Sfaria. Shamayim Omrim. Hashamayim is subprim kavod kel umaseya dav makira arakia. The heavens are saying the heavens speak of Kel's kavod and the skies tell of his handiwork. Can you see it? It's not in the direction yeah. of the book itself. I'm looking for it. It might be. Um, here, um, if you go down to Parak 1, chapter 1, because that's the introduction. Oh. Yeah, there it is. Shemayim. You got it. Okay. And then here it says the Aretz. So it says the Aretz says, the David Mizmor La Shem Haaretz Mula Tevel Viyoshveban. Um, the earth is saying the earth and everything is in. Thing in it are like um, Chava, 
I think Tama was saying um your K Bav K is that means Havaya. Oh, no, no, no. no. And then and the what's the difference thing. though? It says Miknaf Haaretz Mirosh Shemani Tzvila Tzadik, and it's saying from the wings of the land we have heard song glory to the righteous. What's the difference between? Um, do you know? The the beauty of the 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 what I see behind the earth is that La Haaretz La Hashem Haaretz Umlo Oh, so the whole world or earth is filled with Hashem's glory. The Tevel the Yoshev Baba Omer, and so. From the edge of the earth, we have heard songs, glory for the righteous, that all of us hidden, all of nature and all of us hidden are singing praises all over the earth. And that's what the heaven is hearing. The heavens are hearing all the songs of all the creatures and all of nature and all of our humanity singing to Hashem. So it's mm -hmm. almost as if the earth itself is a giant speaker. <laughs> It's like echoing, like it's echoing our prayers, it's echoing our desires, our, our wants, our wishes, our connection, and tzvilas to Hashem. Yes. Kind of? Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Like it has its own prayer, and yet it's also like a sounding board for our prayers. If I'm hearing you correctly. Um, this, I, I, I love this, the Schottenstein version of Parakshira. We have seen the moon, it is barren and empty, just as the earth would be if God had not filled it with all that is needed for life and populated it with billions of people and trillions of creatures. Why? So that an infinitesimal fraction of its inhabitants would recognize that we are here to make the earth heavenly and use its goodness to seed it back to the one who put us here. When we do that, we sing the song of the earth, the song that fulfills the purpose of its creation. I highly recommend the Schottenstein version. It is just beautiful to look at in English mm -hmm. and Hebrew. And then it has a beautiful um, Agadot and, and Midrash on the bottom. It's very, you very it every, lovely. You say it every day, Havalea? Uh, yeah. I, well, believe Netter, I try, yes. Wow. That's amazing. It's really inspiring, by the way. It's very, like yesterday, my friend had a snail by her door. I think that's what happened. I went to visit a friend. She had a snail by her door. And we like, we're like, oh, what is, you know, she's like, what does the snail say in Parakshira? And it was something about like that that evil will be nullified or something. I was like, wow, that's like a really beautiful confirmation of like everything we're hoping for and davening for, like, you know, the end of all evil, only goodness to prevail. Um I wanna really I wanna I wanna add that this is a building block. To recognizing that you, you too glorify Hashem's handiwork. You, if we are Hashem's masterpiece, and let's say to the world, it seems like something is tragic, like what happened to Chaya Malka. And then we, we marvel at God's handiwork, Chaya Malka, who's taken something so challenging in her life, like a fire, and turned it into something that is really glorifying Hashem and then the nations of the world and everyone who sees Chaimaka says wow just like when you see the beautiful earth and the sky that glorify Hashem's handiwork that tell about Hashem's greatness can you now apply that to your shira what is your shira how do you turn your mm -hmm. sorrow into a song your it's it's all the same it's just that Hashem wants us to be the ones to co-create that song with him in a way, like animals, they don't have choice. That's the difference. So their song has been given to them, and that's it. They This is the song of the snail, and this is the song of the sea and the heavens. But we get to choose our song. It's amazing. And so what seems to be bad is, is Hashem's way of helping us turn the lows into our song, the lows and the highs, and it all becomes the beautiful masterpiece of our own symphony. And then together we sing our songs and we tell our stories and we inspire each other. Mm. That's why it's so important to be proud and loud about the tests that Shem has given you and how you're turning them into your song. Now, nobody wants to just hear the lows of your life. Nobody would go, that's go to the therapist. But everybody wants to... <laughs> Everybody wants to hear how you how you're singing to Hashem through the lows of your life. You become someone that we all go, 
wow, how do you do that? How do you sing Hashem in such darkness? And then you become a blessing to the world. And even the nations will say, wow, like it says, nicely, like that Hashem, you had given them tests to raise them up, to reward them, to show how great the Jewish people are. Wow. I was also thinking, like it says in, um, it says, Az Yamale Sechok Pinu, it's going to say, like, why did Hashem, you know, why did Hashem save them? It says, we were, what was it? Our, our mouths are filled with laughter. Um, no, Az Yoma Bragayim, why is it that Hashem elevated us or made us great? Because it says, Az Yamale Sechok Pinu, like our, our mouths were filled with laughter. Um, so it's like really interesting because Yitzhak, who's also represents laughter, is also Gavura. It's also the it's also that those the constriction and the symptom, the test, but inside of the test, you could find that like almost like that laughter, like haha, like I overcame the darkness. Like today's Tanya actually speaks about it, like how the the darkness is not there to bring us down. It actually it's its real intention is to elevate us. So it really connects with your um with your lesson of Nesla Hisno says is that like the test and the darkness and the Yates Ahara, because it says about the Yates Ahara, it says um something like um Rabbi Gordon was saying about how it's an even greater creation than the Yates Tov. Like it says like the Yates are the Yates are Tov is great and the Yates Ahara is even greater or something like that. And he's like questioning like how is that possible? So the reason why it's greater is because it's it's bringing out our greatness. It's bringing out our, our deepest you know, deepest depths and our deepest parts of ourselves. And it's like, that's really the intention. So really like, it's, it's just all connected. <laughs> so even the, the Yitzchaks, the, the, maybe the constriction, the Gavura we, we experience, there's also like this deeper level, we can experience that unlimitedness, like in the constriction, we could find our, our miraculous light and our, our elevation of our soul. So anyone want to share what they're painting? I want to share the inspiration because I bought myself watercolors literally five years ago. And today is the first day that I'm actually using them. Oh my okay. gosh. Hey. Using them. And I'm very like nothing, but even to put this much color to paper to me, it's so thrilling. I love it. I saw, it. okay, you painted the sky and the earth. I just have a little earth in one cloud going right now. I love it. Oh, <laughs> with the Pasukim connected? Uh, well, I, I, my first idea was that I wanted to do just musical notes coming out of the earth everywhere, you know, oh, yeah. musical notes going up to the clouds. But my earth's a little small. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're putting in music, like the music that one might not necessarily hear or, you know, be tuned into, but like, yeah, that's, that's also like, isn't that how it says like the earth moves, right? So the way it moves is also music or something like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the, the, the movement itself, right? Like the way that the earth spins on, on its axis itself is music. Yes, it's frequency and it's actually megahertz frequencies. And I think the earth rotates, I think to five, 428, but there's so much science around vibration and frequency. And so, yes, there, there, you can actually tune in on YouTube. And if you put in megahertz music, you can have, you know, the earth vibrations and the uh, healing vibrations and chakra vibrations and each chakra an energy center and color vibrates to a different frequency. That's how we get the different colors and different sounds. So everything is connected via, really via sound. That's amazing. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you, Kavalea, for sharing. Anyone else? I think Laura is. Yes. Hi. Hi, Uvala. Uh, thank God. Um, I was, um, I was, I thought I was going to be doing Solster this hour <laughs> and it turns out there isn't any. So I just went to check my WhatsApps and I found that you were teaching. So I was like, Oh, I'm going to jump on and do that. But I was already, I had my paints out already because I had been doing some work on something the hour before. So now I got a chance to uh, complete, well, not complete, but move along in what I'm doing. Um, I had a very particular vision um 
I've been following Rav Daniel Katz, um, you know, what he's been doing since the war started. And during one of the meditations, I had a very specific vision, visualization, and I decided I want to try and work with that. So I was already doing, you know, some of that um, when I jumped on. So anyway, would you uh, like to share? I'd love to see. Yeah. So I, I, I've been working with um, another teacher online and, and I took a course with her that had to do with drawing, I don't know what she called it, moons and mists or worlds and somethings or whatever. It was all about um, playing with circles and making them Ooh, into yeah. like um, things like moons and Ooh. I don't know, different things like that. And then there's all these there's variations. variations. So, so I had done this done this morning already. Um, that's just going to be my foundation for the next thing that I'm going to do with it. Um, and then I had started stenciling. Uh, I hope American Airlines, uh, United Airlines doesn't mind, but I stole their logo for my. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> OK, so so that's what I've been doing this hour is I've been kind of watercoloring it in, trying different stuff. And it's part of that vision that I want to um, eventually produce. So. Um, and it has to do with all the um, neshamas connected as mm. points of light all over the world. Oh, that's, wow. That's oh. what came to me. Um, you know, all the Jewish souls all over and how we're giving each other light and strength. So the whole thing? Can you lift it up? That is uh, incredible. So this has nothing to do with Perichira, but it has to do with what I was already. I, I think it's connected, though. I mean, because we're saying how every, like, first of all, you had was the moon there that you were, you know, the circle became the moon and then you have the universe which we're all connected and I, essentially we're all kind of singing that song to hashem right it's like a, a vibration like probably have a song a vibration and frequency mm -hmm. yes. right it's not necessarily a a song an audible song but it's an energy or the energy flow the exchange that's a song like the energy, i the was water. really i was really feeling the strength that we can give each other by by knowing that we're connected through Hashem's blessings and through our energies and lights together and our intentions to bring light into the world. That's kind of where this is going. So yeah, okay, so, nice so to see you. <laughs> I'm gonna have to jump off soon. I love your, <clears throat> you call it a visual prayer. I love your visual prayer. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Laura. Um, what about Ariella or Chaya Malka? Who else? Malka Bracha. Anyone want to share? Oh, Malka Bracha asked the question. Oh, can anyone please add the last quote from Safaria about the, the clouds? Oh, sure. Okay, I'll... Um, one second. Where did I find there it? Are two, I got the clouds. They're right here. There's okay. actually... There's two sets of cloud prayers because one is the Anane uh, Chavod. Um you have day, it comes here. Oh, stars. Yeah, that's a nice one. Okay. It's Avim Omrim. The cl thick clouds say, Yoshet Choshech Sitros Vivotav Sukato Cheshchat Mayim Aveshech Hakim. He made darkness his concealment, his shelter surrounding him, the darkness of water, the clouds of heaven. That's an intense one. I um, have this one. There which is like one. which is beautiful because water was not anything that was created there's no creation of water in the seven days of creation creation is uh uh, uh it's 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 uh it's an essence of of the kaddish baruch Hu that preceded our formal creation and so that's what this is sort of alluding to that hashem has surrounded himself within the clouds and he's in the heavenly waters the darkness of the heavenly waters and, and it's so interesting because the oceans and the layers of what Hashem has created in the oceans are, and the thousands and millions of fish that swim together and everything, it's all a reflection of the worlds above that he's created of angels and everything is reflected in what we don't see in the ocean. Um, yeah. But then the clouds of glory, and I'm, I don't think this is the proper translation because I've seen a different translation, but Anane Chavod Omrim, Af Bri Yadriach Av, Yafitz Anan Oro. Even when it is clear, he thickens clouds. He spreads out his rain clouds. So, but 
it's like no. um it's like the clouds separate and they also connect mm. we have some connection here when we're looking out around us yeah it's true there's the what the different kinds of clouds the ones that the cumulus and the <laughs> all clouds i don't know the names but ones that accumulate together and they stick together and then the one that's spread interesting um but you can't look through the crowd clouds and see heaven you can't see anything beyond the clouds so you have the earth and and the and the streams and the water beneath you and you have the clouds above you but you mm. can't see beyond it wow unless you're a scuba diver and you could see all the ocean many people many of them do <laughs> Well, maybe that's like the key to life. Also, looking looking beyond the clouds, mm -hmm. <laughs> looking beyond that, you know, um, I guess that obstacle or that test. We can also look at the cloud as a metaphor. Or take an airplane trip somewhere, but no matter how hard you try, you're not going to see the stem ever. You're going to see images, you know, like like images that the stem creates for you to understand, you know. A whole multitude of ocean life and and the clouds and etc. But you're not going to actually get through those. So they're borders. That's true. They're metaphors, though. Sometimes nature, you know, could be metaphor. Um. Anyone else want to share some like insight or their art? I'm just putting the pasukim on the, um, here, I'll show you. I'm putting the pasukim on my clouds and I'm putting the pasukim on my earth. Um, Nahama, could you post the, um, can you post the, here, I have my, the peg here again? Yeah, because I think, I don't know if everyone has the pasukim. So here, I I posted the cloud one. It says, of Yafit's Anan Oro. It has to do with like the light clouds are saying he he burdens the thick cloud with an overflow and then the the cloud scatters, I guess, of water. I guess an overflow of water. Not really sure. They scatter. Um but then something about his light says Yafit's Anan Oro. Oro means light. So I guess the cloud spreads its light. Maybe the sun shines through the clouds when it spreads apart. Um, and then I'm going to put the pasuk of the earth. I have the brown for the earth. And then I'm going to put in the river pasuk here. So I think it would be cool if someone did a whole parakshira like in visual forms. Like meaning like an art form. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with Reb Svi Berger. Shalom. He got a dispensation from the Rebbe. Uh, his museum was the Museum of Tehillim, but the Rebbe gave him a dispensation and he did 150 paintings. I think he did 10 paintings a year for 15 years or 15 paintings for 10 years. And he did one or two psukim from each of the Tehillim and he made, uh, I'll, I'll go get the book. It's just, it's absolutely magnificent. Oh yeah, I think I was at his gallery in Yerushalayim. Yeah, I think I was there. Wow. But I don't know if he did the Parakshira, he did Tehillim. I'm just thinking it would be really awesome if someone did <laughs> the whole parakshira in visual form. I think she said Rabbi Tzvi Berger. Here, I'll put it in the chat. Rabbi Tzvi. This is just one of his thoughts. Um, and it's the Museum of Psalms. It used to be on Harav Cook Street, but now it's right across the street from the Chabad Shul in the Old mm -hmm. City. Moshe Tzvi mm -hmm. Halevi Burger. And I'm going to randomly open it up and see what to hell when we come to. It's Psalm 20. Ha, ha, ha. One we're saying every day, everybody now. So just this is just such an amazing... Let me get rid of the corner. Wow. Yes, this one with the Yerushalayim. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And his, his, you know, in, in his original museum, he had taken the domes. He lived in old, Rav Cook's original home, and all of his ceilings were domed. And um, 
he painted the whole dome in one painting. I mean, it was just really magnificent. Um, wow. what, 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 you're saying he, he painted the dome of the ceiling? On the inside of Rob Cook, it, it, his old, in his, where he used to be, where he, he lived in Rob Cook's house for a very long time. Wow, um, that's on, really uh, special. Yeah, wow, but you can find him that. on museumofpsalms.com, actually. Museumofpsalms.com. And I believe Mordechai is the man who took over uh, for him and is promoting him uh, now that he's he's passed. He was a Holocaust survivor and his father wanted him to be a dentist and he never wanted to be a dentist. And I believe he was like one of 13 and he was the only one in his family that survived, I think. And after the war, he went to France and studied in the, so, uh, the Sorbonne or whatever the fancy schmancy is. Yeah, that. the rest went to the Sorbonne, Sor Sorbonne. Yeah. I wonder if they connected there. The Rebbe was there for like seven years, I believe. Isn't that fascinating? I wonder if they connected there. <clears throat> yeah, I highly recommend going to his museum. His 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 works are, uh, it's incredible. He did, Nahama would love it. I have another book I'll share another day. He did um, a book of meditations on the sun and on nature. And it, it's it's just beautiful. Wow, is it inspired so, by Tarek Shira, or is it his own his own? No, meditation? it's his own. It's his own thing. Ooh. Wow, could you post that on the group, like the two books? So yeah, fascinating. Yeah, yeah, I'll try. I'll find the other one, and um, I'm, I'm glad he didn't one. become a dentist. <laughs> right, I'm not a good poster, but I will see if I can find. Uh, I would just I I'll go look at. I haven't looked at his website in a long time. Um. Mm. But I'm sure I'm sure it's all right there. Take a look. Wow. He created he created beauty from the from the brokenness of his, you know. It's amazing. Wow. 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 Exactly what we were saying today, right? Mm -hmm. Becoming a banner, becoming a, a nace, like being that miracle, walking miracle. How often, like, like, do we look at our, we're like, wow, we went through that. We're still walking around. It's like, whoa. <laughs> I was talking to someone on Friday about it. She like had kind of like a, like an NDE. And she's just like, I'm walking. I can't believe like afterwards, I just, Shem gave me like a new, you know, like a new lease on life. <laughs> it's like, how often does I don't happen? know. I don't know how to share this properly but it, it's just www the museum of psalms museum of not even the museum of psalms.com and you get there and it, okay. it, it you. gives you everything wow thank you beautiful uh, i can I have this it on. and it's it is it's on it's 56 chabad street the old city in Yerushalayim, literally across the street from the big main chabad shul in the old city mm. I have a, a beautiful story about that. Um, that yeah. my friend, her name was Liva Simcha Liva Berger. She was married to this um, painter for a number of years. It was, uh, you know, they got married when they were like in their seventies, and um, she was like looking for a shidduch, and she. I don't remember who told her this, but someone told her, don't, don't waste your time going out looking for shiduchim. Your shidduch is going to come right to your door. And so, you know, she believed it. And, um, and he came right to her door. I, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but they got married and uh, they were married for quite a number of years. And uh, just uh, maybe two years ago, my friend passed away. He's a, and I don't remember when he passed away, but um, so well, you're saying your your friend married him. Your yeah, friend was I was kidding. I I remember like at the at the Bedeckin. You know, it was just like uh, I said, if Thank this you first, okay. Um, inspiration to people who didn't get married yet you know that you could still get married when you're 70 years old <laughs> she had children she had children already and wow. i'm not sure about him but Baruch Hashem, she was also a very 
artistic. That's a beautiful Bitachon art story. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Perfect for this class. I want to, um, Hanamalka, thank you for connecting through Karen. Oh. Connected, right? Through I'm Hanamalka. Uh, and I, I've heard about you before. I think I even might have read your book a long time oh. ago. Right? Uh -huh, yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. 1995 wow. it came out. <laughs> So anyone who's new here, we have a WhatsApp group and um, where we share GROWS. And GROW stands for Gratitude, Recognition, Oneness, and Wishes. It's personalizing the prayers and living with it so that your prayers become the building block of Bitachon. So I want to ask you all, how does this parakshira, how does it build? I want to say a shout out to all my Leva Am buddies. Thanks for joining. We're collaborating with Hama and I, so shout out to all you guys. I see Carol's here and and uh, Hana Malk, Hana, Hana Rifka and Chaya Sarah, Hana Malka, Baruch Hashem. Thank you. But I did I didn't know that you were painting because I I love to paint, but I don't find very much time to do it, so. Oh, so Chaya Malka, have you painted in this class? I would love to see. No, you. I haven't. I just paint by myself. And oh. I'm, I mean, I studied art also, and I studied fashion designing before I became religious. So I have a lot of talents, Baruch Hashem. So, Hashem. Where did you study art? Where did you study art? Also dance. Oh, wow. Yeah. So where did you study art? Um, I I studied for a fashion designing for two years in FIC in New York City, and then then I, I I whatever I decided it was it wasn't a it wasn't like such a modest industry even though I wasn't you know religious then it, certain things about it bothered me so I figured okay I'll go back to college i'll get more i don't know what what's it called um more um smarter <laughs> i don't know more worldly and then you know if i ever want to be a fashion designer you know when i have money or what whatnot i could do that so I, um i went back to you know and then when they said well what do you want to study there was nothing interesting to me <laughs> except art you know so i studied art painting and sculpture and and um you know the worst part was the art history course that i had to take but you know Baruch Hashem, i passed i may I, and i have a have a degree so like actually when i came to israel and i i went to a yeshuv meitzad where my sister lived and um i went for i don't know how many i don't know a year or a half a year and i and i um i taught sewing and because I had a degree, I, I made 35 shekels an hour. It was like, <laughs> so, it was just pretty funny. So anyway, um, well, I never, find you know, your, I, where can we find kids, your, <laughs> well, where can we find kids, your art? Where do we find your art? Uh, like, in my living room. <laughs> yeah. I don't have, uh, you know, pieces any, I have. Things that I, you know, I did years ago that were pretty nice. Some of my kids have my paintings, but um, I like to, you know, I have it actually in my living room. I have two paintings that I'm almost finished with. And I don't know, I just, I, I, instead of painting, I would do photography because, you know, that's just one, one or two clicks. That's what I would do to satisfy my, you know, desire to, um bring Hashem's beauty you know into the world seeing you know nature and clouds and stuff and I'm always taking pictures but really I do like to paint so I, I want to do more do it more so this is very inspiring for me. wow beautiful well when you if you end up doing something inspired by the class you could totally post it on the grow if you're are you on the grow whatsapp I posted, yeah, I posted the link so everyone who's new here join the growth circle. Okay. Yeah, please put 
Art, everyone. Havalea, Hayamaka. Who would like to share art now? Let's share. Art. Who can share their art? I can share my art. Okay, great. I was behind the camera, but I was very busy. <laughs> Um, let's see. So I was like thinking what I should paint or what I should do, but because of the growth circle, I decided to um, start art in my home. So my Shabbos, after everything's clean and put away, I sort of sleeping, I do art with my girls. So I put everything away and I'm like, no, I'm not taking it back out. So I just used markers to do this with um, water. Let me show you. And I was like listening, like, you know, what theme do I want to choose? So I kind of just like put it all together. Uh, let's see. So that's basically it. I did like wow. water with the rocks oh. and the trees and the sun, sky with some color. Yeah, so. Stunning. It's on a, it's a, it's paper? It's paper. I did it on a, on an art paper. Yeah. Not even it's canvas. It's watercolor? You said it's marked? No, no. I, I just used some of my kids' markers, like literally like like some markers. And then I just wow. beautiful. Kaya, I you're an alchemist. <laughs> you're better than an alchemist. You can take ordinary paper and markers and turn it into gold. Wow. <laughs> Did you dip the markers into water? Because you got a watercolor effect. Right. No, I I, I used my, my kitchen sponge. <laughs> and I dipped it into <laughs> I water. It. And then my you fingers wet the paper. Lesson? No, I first, I just took, let's say, marker and I scribbled across the sky and then I just took water and it just made everything dissolve. Like it took away, like, yeah. And then once the paper was wet for the leaves, I just like, like blotted straight on when it was still wet. So it gave that like watercolor effect. I love I just that I added idea. water to just, to just blend it all in, I guess. And it's so forgiving because, like, there's so many mistakes in here, but it doesn't matter. Like, I don't see any mistakes. Just... It looks beautiful. It looks very harmonious. Yeah. It looks very peaceful. <laughs> so we've got the water, it. we've got the sun, we've got the trees, all the grass, all of it. I even oh, put wow. some peach for flowers. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Wow. How long did that take you? You're saying you started at Mote Shabbos or you did it now? No, no, I did this now. No. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying I didn't want to pull out all my canvases and paints and paintbrushes again because uh, I literally just put it away yesterday. So I, I was like, I've got to find something else to work with. Amazing. So something from nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, my eye. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Can you, would you post it on the grow? That would be awesome. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. How about Ariella? It looks like you've been working <laughs> in between the kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to say that. Um, wow. Ariella, go ahead. That you can also. Wow. Take... Look at that waterfall. We're going to make it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I need to spotlight you. Wow. Really nice. I love that UK Vavke. We have a so hard stream. Just letting you know. Just letting you know that it's famous. It. You can't throw that out. I haven't finished it because so I use I usually do a meditation like daily where um I visualize the light of a shem showering like like a waterfall falling down on me and on my loved ones. And it, it's usually colored um, gold, purple gold. And so my intention is to add those colors in this, in this um, uh, paint. But as, as you can see, I can't right now. <laughs> But that's my intention because I usually when yes, baby, um, I usually try to visualize that in the morning um, because purple is a protective color, um, and also golden is a protective color. So I usually in the morning when I when I pray and when I say Modani and Shema. I also visualize like um, a waterfall and the waterfall 
makes a bubble around myself and around my the people I love and my you can the bubble can extend as big as you want um as a protection uh like with a shem you know so it's purple gold the color wow that's really special I know gold is um is Gevura like like I learned it in um What's it called? I have a book by Arya Kaplan. He talks about the colors and the spheros. Yeah, so he says gold is Gavura, so that's that protection, like you're saying, um, which is interesting. Yes. I don't remember what he said purple was. I guess there's different renditions of the different colors, but it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Wow. No, and I don't know who said that I cannot throw this away. No, I'm not planning on throwing it away. <laughs> Oh, because it has a Shem's name. That's what she said. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, I'm just saying because you have Shem Hashem that it has Kedusha. You spelled Hashem's name out. You didn't write a, a no. kof. Oh, I know. I know. I'm planning to like put it up Perfect. somewhere. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love yeah. that you have the, your visual. Like I said earlier, the visual prayer, the visual tefillah. It's like, it's so beautiful to do that. Now I'm inspired. I'm like, I want to do that meditation of Haiti. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, maybe you could share that meditation with us if, if it's yeah. your personal one or if it's someone else's. I don't yeah. know, but either so way, it's, it's, here. it's a combination of mine and also a combination of Rabbi Daniel Katz. He's he the meditation that he does is only the waterfall with light, I think. Mm -hmm. mm. But I add, I add the um, the colors and also making it into a bubble of protection and expanding that bubble not only to myself but to my loved ones too so mm -hmm. not only am, not only am i protecting myself but i'm extending that protection to my loved ones no matter where they are wow i love that that's so powerful thank you Yes. I'm like I didn't dive in yet, so when I dive in, <laughs> I'll have something to like focus and meditate on. That yeah, is a, that is a beautiful idea because I used to go to YouTube to all the nature videos before I dive in. That's a that's an amazing idea and just visualization, just uh, yeah, meditation. yeah. You know who also has? Oh, um, I need to share this. This is really cool. Um. Huh. So I, I got signed up with these it's Jewish women meditations it's like a whole resource of all these um Jewish women's meditations um Ristavara Wallen is on there Goldie Michal um I don't know her last name she's from the UK she does harp meditations she even has one for children um she's amazing there's just other there's other women that do like beautiful meditations I can see if I could send the link to the grow. Um, I'm not even sure how it came into my inbox, but I was listening to one yesterday. I fell asleep. I took a nap with it. Sometimes I'm like, it just needs to like, I just need to like wind down with it. And then I fall asleep. <laughs> I guess my neshama hears it somehow. Um, yeah. Anyone else want to share? Thank you so much, Ariella. Thank you. I'm going to let you go because these two are getting a little... <laughs> yeah they need you thank you so much have a blessed day i, I hope they're you. feeling better are they feeling better i hope thank so. god yeah baruch hashem yes baruch hashem good <laughs> good to yeah. hear have a blessed one you too amen. amen bye thanks for sharing and joining us thank you so much you know what's cool is that like this idea of Parak Shira came to me yesterday and then Havalea knows so much about Parak Shira. It's like really <laughs> I have the same I connection? have the same book. I have the same book that she does and I always keep it in my car because I feel like it protects me every time I go out somewhere, <laughs> anywhere. Wow. That's yeah. beautiful. Wow. I think my father, he sent us a Parak Shira, but it's not the same one. I don't know what it is. It was during COVID. And he sent us this. It was a beautiful one with all different stories. I have to find it. Now I'm inspired to find it and share it with you. <laughs> I wonder if, um, Nechama, you said you had a flood in your basement. I wonder if the pot, there's a plastic for the waters. <laughs> the water is in your basement. <laughs> Singing to Hashem. Oh, wow.
assim que a vez. <risos> So yeah, it's so beautiful when you connect Hashem through nature and then you connect Hashem through your own nature, your own, yeah. nature, your own test. Where Hashem tests your natural response. And when you go beyond your nature, your natural response, that's like a miracle in nature. Sometimes we see miracles in nature. So we want Hashem to go beyond the nature. It's so beautiful when you Amen. connect it. And, I was thinking how each person's name is a little representation of your song because that was given to you by pure divine inspiration. It was Ruach HaKaitas when you were named. So just like thinking about your name and how it connects to your nature as well as your gift and mm. how you bring the divine into the world and how you find Hashem's song within your nature within the path that Hashem has given you in your life. And your 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 divine connection that's inherent in your name is is the way Hashem is keeping you alive. Just like everything in nature also has a name. David Amelach was the one who saw not David, Adam. Adam saw the spark in each thing in nature and he named it. And mm. that's it and it's named according to its godly spark that animates it so our our names animate us and there's so much meaning in in our names so i think each of you can just think about your own that could be our next one next week we'll, we'll paint our names <laughs> and our and what it means to us maybe we can do that oh that's a really good idea because um you actually helped me understand something today Ahula. that's going to be my art is how i i connect things <laughs> i didn't actually do the art because i was working on my bitachon bricks from my retreat um, awesome. but um what i was thinking how how very much connected i feel to my father's mission and each of us you know you in your own way you can think about like whose mission that came of someone who came before you or you connected to. It could be a woman, it could be your, your grandparents, your parents, anyone. And often you'll see a connection within your name. So I never thought until today, if somebody, um, sorry, there's, I'll just, I want to mute. I never, I never saw such a connection um, between my father's name and my own, and also both of our missions. So my name, Nahamadina is bringing comfort to the din, which is the constriction, the severity, the gvura of Hashem, and bringing nechama to it. And the ultimate nechama is our, our response, is where we reveal Hashem through that din. And we we show how we have been raised up, like nasat el that that has uplifted us and our mission in this world okay and if you look at my father's name as real yitzchak you were speaking about the name yitzchak yitzchak also represents gavura din constriction and my father's like mission was to let people know that hashem Azriel, hashem is your helper and also Azriel could also be that you are hashem's helper it could be both ways and this idea that these two, when we face Yitzchak, which is Gavura, or Dina, which is my second name, both of our second names, we need to remember two things, is knowing as real, knowing that you can be Hashem's helper in this area of the world, and you can beautify this test. Like whatever you've been given, you bring beauty, beauty to Hashem's handiwork, to Hashem's tests in this world. And then with the knowledge that Hashem is helping you, you are Hashem's helper. And this is the nechama. This is the ultimate nechama and comfort, consolation. And when Mashiach comes, we're actually going to say, Aitcha Hashem kianaftabi. Aitcha, in the word odeh, thank you. Thank you, Hashem, for your anger. Right now it appears to be anger, but really it was the catalyst to create the connection to Hashem, which created the, the huge light in this world which brings Geula. So I just see that I, I've always been on this journey to transform 
pain into purpose, into comfort. And thank God I've been able to do it with my own loss of my father, which I don't think the same mission, I would have had a different mission. It's almost like he went into hiding to, to allow himself to become like the, the teacher of, of transforming grief into growth and loss into light. And ultimately that's, that's the Nechama. So um, I feel like in a way humbled that there, I didn't suffer in vain. My pain wasn't in vain. <laughs> so, thank you, Hashem. <laughs> and I see my story in my name and in like connecting to this Pasuk, which was the last teachings that my father ever taught, was this teaching of, of David Amelech. And then I get to continue from his last words. Thank you to each of you for giving me the opportunity to share this with all of you and from here with the world. So that was just my little, my little art words. <laughs> I love it. I feel like I need to like look into my name more. Like, I mean, I feel like I know what my first name means. Ahuva means beloved, and but. Leia is, I feel she's like a little mysterious to me. <laughs> Ironically, I feel like Ra Rachel is more of a, a figure that I understand in Tanakh, but Leia is like a little mysterious. I know she. I, I actually love Leia. Another time I could, Leia is the mother of Dina. So I really love Leia. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe, maybe for next class, you'll share another, that. Yeah. Another time. So um, Chava Leia, do you want to say something? Wait, we cannot hear you, darling. Um, it's very noisy in my neighborhood, so I have to keep the sound up. But um, I have a beautiful, some beautiful books on on Hebrew names. So um, I'll take a look and see if there's one that um, that has some very quick explanations for individual names. Uh, what's in a name, and of course the letters of the name. You know, the, there's so many Hebrew books on the, the beautifulness of all the Hebrew letters. And that's really the connection to, to Adam, because when he saw the spark of Hashem and named everything in creation, what were his next words? What's the purpose of all of these creations, including man? Let's all sing to Hashem. We all have a shira. And so each and every one of you has a shira. And it begins with your name. That's the first moment that you were given the title of your song is kind of like your name because your soul is animated by the build, by the letters of your name. Those are the building blocks of creation. The Hebrew letters, it's the building blocks of bitachon, of believing that your name really is has some hints to your soul, your soul powers. What's maybe we can connect it with Parsha Shmot, because today I was learning with my rabbi. We're learning we're learning a, a mimer on on the beginning of Shmot, and why, you know we translate it as Exodus, but it's not Exodus, right? Shmot is names, and what was one of the biggest sources of the Jewish people in Egypt was that they kept their Hebrew names, and that one of the things he brought out was that each one of the tribes, Reuveni. Um, Shimoni, each each of the tribes embodied the uh, the Yud and the K of Hashem's name. But the what came to me during class today was the idea that you know only the Levim really learned. Everybody else was you know so enslaved. But the fact that they were using their Hebrew names was the Tsinor for Hashem to be able to still bring down his Shefa and his energy through the Hebrew language of the names of of the Jewish people in Mitzrayim. So just some food for thought. Yeah. Wow. And they didn't change their names in Egypt. That was really part of the, so I will look into, there's a lot of, about the whole idea of Shmos. This week is the isn't it? Wait, yeah. The, we're heading into Shemais. Yeah. Yeah, so, we are heading there. Oh, so that's so perfect for next week, Ahuva. <laughs> the name, the name. That's why my soul was connecting to names. I literally do not plan what the next theme is. It's just like, 
okay, <laughs> this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling this. <laughs> like last week, Ahuva, I was speaking about something and then you're like, that's today's Hayom Yom. I'm like, thank you, Hashem. <laughs> <laughs> wow. In tune for Hashem. Wow. All right. So All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Anyone else want to share your art before we go? Um, Havalea is speaking, but she's muted. Havalea, can you unmute again? <laughs> I live in such a noisy place, it's crazy. But uh, compared to most of you all, I'm like a kindergarten artist and I'm like so proud of my little thing that I did here, okay? Oh, wow. So if you can see, I got little music notes, but whatever. <laughs> compared I to like the that. of all you ladies, this is like really preschool. <laughs> no way, it's funny. I love it. I love the musical notes and I like the earth and the mountains. and. <laughs> Oh, that was so your beautiful. Favorite. Thank you so much. Aw. Please post it if you're on the group. <laughs> That's too lame. Here I'm so happy you got to use your watercolors for the first time today. Yay. Really, me too. The I more you, the by the way, the more you use it, the more you'll get used to the um you know what I'm saying? The materials and, and how to like manipulate and use them. So like pa I use pastels every once in a while. So oh, this, that's so pretty. I mean, but it, it just shows that anybody name, Hava. anybody can do art because, you know, this is like you, you just take color and you just do. And there's, you know, as long as you don't judge yourself and it brings you pleasure. That's what it's about. Wow, so you already did your name. You did you went two with your <laughs> I, I love the pastels. They're they're so, wow. so much fun because you get to get your hands dirty. Oh yeah, the like, chalk pastels. Yeah. No, it's so good that you said I'm like a what what level did you say of art? My daughter, who is an artist, she says that is the key to art. Just go back to your kindergarten <laughs> person, inner child, because you never had you didn't have inhibition when you were six. <laughs> the adult in us that starts judging get rid of all the judgment go back to being five six years old and let, <laughs> let your art you know express itself and, it, and it's actually beautiful you don't <laughs> but it's a good it's so my daughter whenever she starts an art class for women who are, who are like I can't do this she she gives them that whole speech about becoming <laughs> going back to being five years old <laughs> wow I love that <laughs> um, well, let your inner child express itself what, herself <laughs> what about focusing on the places where you do have where you leave or kind of know that you do have a talent um because there's only so many hours in a day or is art like one of these fundamental what do you think um you know what I'm saying like I mean art could also be writing and dance I mean that could right. be art. Well, I mean visual art visual that's like what we're doing here like do you feel like someone has to, I don't does it bring you pleasure it it's sounds about like, you know it's very laborious to me it's very laborious maybe so if, I, maybe if I took a art class it would be different but you know I mean I've I've created some really nice things but it's it's not it's time consuming <laughs> I think you can answer your own question, Lank Bracha. What's that? What do you, I can't. <laughs> if you experience pleasure from what you're doing, no matter what it is, then Hashem, then you're giving Hashem pleasure. So if something's hey, laborious, it that's a, like that's not it. Then it's a question of focus, you know. And there's a lot to do. It's a question of okay, what do I focus on? Well, really, this the, class is about bitachon. And Amuna is the art. So if this is your way of processing the lesson, the parashira, and it gives mm -hmm. you pleasure, then, but it's not really about the art. It's not about the outcome. It's actually what we said in the beginning, that a test is not about the outcome. It's about the process. That's why this right. is 
process art. So no one's judging. I mean, we don't want to judge ourselves. That's the most, what's, I think the laborious is when we start to judge ourselves. Yeah. Right. Yourself this amount of time and said, whatever comes out of me and just like, let, let the color hit the paper and let it, let it just let yourself just do it without connect comparing and, and worrying about the outcome that could be applied to life. Mm -hmm. That Hashem has given you ingredients art supplies every single day. And he says, this is your test. And how are you going to respond? How are you going to process? Creative solutions is art. Strategizing, figuring out how to go about it is all artistic. And Hashem appreciates our process and the ways oh. that we bring color into our lives and into the situations that are presented to us. Okay, so then not, not really about the outcome. Then it's a good idea to do it, but I have to do it more in my own time. This is not an art class, actually. It's really an a no. I know, but but you class. have to. You were supposed to produce something at some point. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise you didn't do art. Not really. If you produce bitachon, then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> or but, what about if you produce like um inspiration? Now, when you go outside, you're going to notice like the clouds, and you're going to say, "Wow, they have a song." Or the earth beneath you. Wow, this is actually the earth is singing a song. I mean, that's that's also that's something being produced, an inspiration, and you know, like is an emotion towards Hashem is exactly because art is from the heart. So I'm inspired by seeing Chavalea connect to her inner child and just allow herself to use her watercolors today without you know, without inhibition, that that's inspiring, because that's really a test. A test is a challenge. And our choice is to accept God's challenges, and transform the pain into purpose, or mm -hmm. we just sit in the pain, you know, that the transforming the pain into purpose is that is the moment of tikkun. Mm. The, to me, I mean, I've had several really great uh, tests, where you, once you know, you accept what happened in the situation and then you figure out, well, next time I'm going to approach it or I'm going to stop and I'm going to change the way I approach it or slow down in that moment of deciding to do something different is the moment of tikkun. Hmm. Exactly. And, and you're, you're, and you're revealing Hashem's oneness because you're allowing Hashem to partner with you in that moment so that's yeah. that's if if you if we can learn that from the art that's that's amazing and that's why I didn't do art today because I had I had to um edit my bitachon bricks <laughs> I was adding kupsukim to it but I was so inspired oh. sitting here with all of you so if you want to take an art class that would be a different kind of class um, I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to get going. Okay.